name is Aaron. Today I want to walk you through the Panasonic Toughpad FC M1. This is kind of like the FC G1 smaller brother and I walked you through the G1 last week. Today I want to walk you through this M1 and just give you some uh, basic features, some cool things about it and just kind of talk to you about it really, really quick. It's fully rugged, it's IP65, it means it's dust and water resistant. We dropped for a five foot drop rating on any corner, on any edge, whatever. So it's just good for any job site, and it comes with a bunch of cool and useful optional features. So let me turn this over here and show you that it has an optional hand strap. Now this optional hand strap, it doesn't come on all models, but it can be put on all models. It just secures to these three points right there, and your hand fits in like this. Sorry, got it backwards. You can tighten it down, and that secures it to your palm, so you can use it as a tool while you're walking on the job site, and you don't have to use both hands to secure it. So it just secures on, on that hand. Um, another feature, once you take this uh, hand strap off here, as soon as I navigate it down there. Okay, to get to the battery, this is the battery right here. You have to just kind of take the hand strap out of the way, and it's really easy, simple like that. Um, this comes with a bridge battery. Now that means that the, uh, I just turned it off actually. The bridge battery is able to switch out the battery, which already has a really long life. It can go for the standard battery, it already can stand up to eight hours, so standard shift on a construction site. Or, uh, but with the long life, it can go up to 16 hours. Now you couple that with the bridge battery, and what that means is you can pop out the battery, and you have 30 seconds that you can take that battery, and the screen is still functional, you're not going to lose any data, etc., and you can pop in a new fully charged battery. That's the bridge battery. Um, up here you have your basic options. You have volume control, power on and off. This button locks the ability to um, to rotate the screen. So if you auto rotate on, you can see that it rotates to be um, coordinated with the angle that it's at, and you can turn that off as well. This A button right here can pull up the um, kind of dashboard for the FCM1. Now there's the basic tab, the system tab, and my page tab. The basic one has a lot of the useful features. You can turn on your camera, and this ha this one has a uh, webcam. Also has a rear-facing 8 megapixel camera, and that can be located right there. So both of them can be functional to take pictures of barcodes, documents, etc. That would be switched on with the camera utility right there. The touch panel mode, and this is pretty interesting because the touch panel, it's a very... Um, sensitive capacitive touch screen. That means it's multi-touch and capacitive is different from resistive in the fact that resistive is pressure sensitive. It kind of has some rubber banding and lag behind it. Capacitive actually uses the electronic signature of your fingerprints. And what that usually means is that capacitive is not able to be touched with gloves on or with a, a stylus unless it's a um, resistive stylus. So the M1 actually comes with what Panasonic bills as a capacitive stylus pen. So the capacitive, even though I just described the capacitive screen as reading the electronic signature of your, of your fingerprint, um, this actually uses the stylus to also be capacitive and is very accurate, except there's five different modes that it can do. So if I switched it to touch and applied, and that's just touch, it still reads my fingerprints, but it no longer reads the capacitive stylus. Now, the touch with glove is interesting because Panasonic has allowed the screen to still be capacitive, still be able to read the electronic signature fingerprint, but it through a thin layer of a glove, you can also function that. So as soon as you turn that on, you're able to actually use this touchpad and touchscreen and multi-touch with gloves on. So if you're on the work site and you have gloves on, you don't want to take them off, you turn that on, be able to use the touch screen with gloves on. Very useful. So the pen and touch mode is by far the most applicable mode because it doesn't take away your pen. I don't, I'm not sure why you'd switch it to just pen or just touch. The pen and touch is the one I like to leave it on for default. Speaking of leaving stuff on, as soon as you open up your M1, I would suggest, and this is just personal preference, changing the um, kind of the scale of the scroll bar. So if you open up the scroll bar and you see these windows and the screen is very uh, intricate HD display but that kind of comes with the drawbacks of some stuff being a little smaller so if you have big hands like I've described myself in numerous videos it kind of is uh, rough to kind of navigate sometimes so you can open up your windows button and actually I can demonstrate this little 
Windows icon down here on the bottom is not actually just an icon, it's actually Windows Run button, so it opens up that Windows panel. So you're going to go to Control Panel. I probably can use the stylus here for this. So you're going to say uh, Appearance and Personalization, and you're going to go up to here to change window glass colors. And that, with Windows 7 Professional, there's a few different ways to do it with Windows 8 or Windows 10 operating system, but this is how you do it with Windows 7. So you're going to go to this uh, Windows Color and Appearance and change the colors. Then you're going to go to Advanced Appearance Settings, click on that. And this drop down arrow is actually going to bring you to a few different options and a few different um, size settings just for Windows navigation. And so I like to go down to the scroll bar, take your size, and you can open up the keyboard and delete the default 17, put it at uh, 50. Let's see what 50 looks like. Okay, let's see if I applied that. Actually, I think I didn't apply that. I just hit enter on the keyboard and that doesn't apply. I don't think so. Let me go back down the scroll bar. Oh, it did apply. Okay, so we should be good. Let's open up that window. And now you see that even without the stylus, the scroll bar has been enlarged to size 50 as opposed to size 17. So it makes it just very much easier to navigate. And you can also play around with the size of icons, buttons, etc., etc. That is just uh, whatever is useful to your fingers, whatever works for you. Okay, so that's my phone going off. I'm sorry about that. Um, so that's the glove touch, multi-touch, stylus touch, and then trying to change the um, size of the icons and scroll bars j just to work with your fingers. So this only weighs at 1.2 pounds, and so um, this is some options on the back that this one actually has. This is a mag stripe reader, and so the application for a mag stripe reader, and this is an optional integration for with MCM1, FZM1s, that um, mag stripe reader is able to take driver's licenses if you're in a, in a squad car and you're, you're a police officer and you need to take a driver's license uh, information really quick you just slide that um, driver's license through there if you're uh, kind of the uh, point of sale for a retail or a restaurant you could take credit card information you could use it all right there and you have the software that you already have downloaded onto it and that would be able to just uh, turn the FZM1 into a lot of different functionable um, applications this one also has the optional LAN port at the top here. And if I just open that up, you'll see that it has LAN port. You could hook that up with a local area network. In this same slot, it's kind of mutually exclusive. You could do like a barcode scanner. And there's a few other different options that are optional upgrades to the M1. Over here, we have the headphone and USB 3.0 jack. Down on the bottom, we have the docking strip, docking connector for the FCM1. So you could slip that into a dock. And we'll demonstrate that in a future video. There's a really cool new product um, that I don't want to spoil the surprise, but that video will probably be coming next week of just being able to slide this in there and have a screen replication and um, port replication of the FCM1. So hopefully we'll be getting that in next week and I'll be able to show that off to you. And uh, then over here you just have your um, power port. And all this is all sealed. There's, there's port covers on all of them to keep it IP65 and um, should be all good. Uh, so if you have any questions about the FCM1, or if you're interested in purchasing one, we sell these, and we also can answer any questions and always help you out with any questions you might have. Anyways, uh, give us a call. We're always looking forward to talking to our customers, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.